G'day everyone, and welcome to Lubrication Explained. In this video, we're going to talk about ICP copper and what high copper in used oil analysis results could mean for your application. So let's take a real world example of an engine oil. Uh, we're going to look at just a single sample, but look at how we need to use some of the other results to give us more context and some different scenarios about how we might use those results uh, to get some more insights for our application. So one thing you'll notice here is I'm just showing the ICP elements and you'll see, okay, copper looks a little bit high. It's uh, 235 parts per million. And most likely if I were using any kind of lab, whether that be third party or one of the lubricant manufacturers, it would probably be an alarm. On the other hand, all the other elements appear normal. So we really want to get some more sample history to place this particular result in context. This is where it's really important um, that we've collected lots of information up front. So what you'll generally find on a used oil analysis report is that they'll plot out the results in some kind of graphical form, but they'll do so with equally um, spaced points by sample. So, you know, the, f the first and the second sample will be equidistant as the second and the third sample. Likewise, the third and the fourth, the fourth and the fifth. So in this instance, when it's plotted out, the trend appears linear. And that doesn't really tell us too much because there aren't too many um, like failure mechanisms which occur in a linear fashion. What it's helpful to do is plot this in some kind of time space. So maybe it's engine hours or engine kilometers. So when we do this, in this particular instance, what we see is that the, the pattern is accelerating. And that's very typical of wear, because as you start to generate wear particles, they in turn generate more wear particles of their own. In fact, wear particles generally become uh, work hardened in the environment. They become uh, even tougher and therefore cause more wear. So it's kind of this accelerating pattern which really runs away from you. So this is pretty typical. But to get this result, what we really need is very accurate reporting from the field. Remember, engine oil hours or oil hours, they are typically user-defined inputs, right? So the used oil analysis program that you're using won't know that automatically. So it's relying on the field personnel who are out there taking and registering the samples to keep very accurate records. But what if, for example, we get see the reverse trend? This is a decelerating trend, which we say is typical of passivation. Now, passivation itself, not particularly harmful, very common to see it, especially in new oil coolers. Um, but we might want to confirm that it's passivation and that we don't have to uh, take any interventions. So in order to confirm this, we really need to understand sort of the chemistry of what's going on. And if you imagine the cooler interface, so there's lubricant or engine oil that's going through the cooler and you've got a, an interface with the copper oil cooler. So on one side here, we're showing copper, that's copper metal, and on the other side, we're showing the lubricant. If I could represent that another way, we've got copper you know, atoms on the left, and on the right, we've got a bulk lubricant, and little squiggly lines I'm showing here are what we call metal deactivators. So they are a class of additive, which is designed to bond to metal surfaces. So in the past, we've talked about ZDDP, that's an anti-wear additive, which is designed to bond with metal surfaces. Well, metal deactivators compete with anti-wear additives um, for space at the metal inter interface, um, but they are designed really to, to make metals inert. So what would happen, and I'll play this in slow motion, is that with new oil coolers that have gone through no passivation process, you'll get a migration of some of the atoms into the lubricant, and eventually some of those are going to disperse. At the same time, the metal deactivator additives are going to want to bond with the metal surface. So now what you can see is there is a reduction in surface area 
or surface contact between the copper metal and the lubricant, right? So we've eliminated three of those sites. As this trend continues and we get more copper migrating into the uh, lubricant, right? We'll also have more metal deactivators occupying sites. And that means that the rate of copper dispersion in the lubricant is going to decrease. And that's why we see that decelerating pattern. Now, that's the theory. How do we think that we can confirm this in the real world? Well, if you imagine that you were taking a used oil sample and you had it in a test tube, if we had, let's, let's play devil's advocate and say that we had wear particles. Wear particles of copper would be held in suspension in the fluid. So what we could do is we could ask the used oil analysis provider to put that sample through a centrifuge. And if they did so, what we would actually see is that these particles would actually drop out to the bottom, right? Because they're in suspension, that mechanical action will cause them to separate out from the rest of the lubricant. So if we were to retake the, the oil out of this um, test tube and put it through the ICP machine, we should see much lower levels of copper. All right, so going back to our example, we had 235 parts per million copper. If we were to get the uh, lab to put it through the centrifuge, and after that, we saw very similar levels of copper, this would give us confidence to say that it is passivation and not wear. That can have really material impacts for our budgeting in terms of maintenance, because the alternative is if it's copper wear, there are only a couple of places that uh, copper wear comes from in an engine, and they're usually pretty bad. So small and big end bearings is a really good example. And an intervention to replace a, a bearing in the crankcase is a much more expensive exercise than knowing that this is just new coolers which are passivating and it shouldn't be a cause of concern. So this is how we really want to take used oil analysis results and combine it with our knowledge of lubricant chemistry to give us insights and a path forward with our maintenance strategy. I hope this has been helpful. I'll go through other examples of different ICP metals and what they could mean in future videos. And this has been Lubrication Explained.